So how do we test random data models? And this comes up all the time in big data and data processing, where you have some random data, you might have a model for the data, and you want to test if that model matches with the data. So here's one example. Uh, let's look at uh, political parties, uh, A, B, and C. So we might have a country that has three political parties. And let's say at the last election, uh, party A got 52% of the vote, party B, 35, and party C, 13. And let's say we want to do some polling. And this happens all the time uh, in politics. Uh, so the election's happened, we've moved on in time, and we'd like to uh, find out if the voters have changed their mind since the election or whether they still have the same distribution of, uh, of their opinions amongst the population. Well, we can't go and run the election all again uh, because uh, that would be a full election. Uh, so all we can do is sample a small subset of the population. So let's say, for example, we, we sampled uh, N equals 100 people. So let's say we're going to sample 100 people. This is, this is N here, N equals 100. Uh, and let's say, for example, uh, we, we did a, a survey and we found, uh, let's say, 51 of those 100 people that we sampled uh, said that they would be voting for uh, Party A if the election happened today. Uh, 36, let's say, said uh, Party B. And let's say 13 said uh, Party C. So these numbers here match up very closely with these numbers. So I think we would draw the conclusion if we just looked at it intuitively, you'd say that the people of that country have not changed their minds significantly since the last election. But you've only sampled 100 people out of the entire population. Uh, so what if you did a different poll and let's say uh, randomly this time uh, you found that 10 people told you they would vote for party A, uh, 8 people for party B and let's say 82 people for party C. Now in this case we've really got two options to us. One option is that people really have changed their minds. Uh, and the other option is that, well, we've only sampled 100 people out of the entire population. Maybe we just got unlucky and maybe we just were unlucky in finding uh, people who, who like Party C more than we found other people. And, and it could be that they, the whole population has not changed its mind, but we got unlucky in the random selection of the people that we chose. So we've got two options. Either they have changed their mind and these numbers have changed, or the population, or uh, the population hasn't changed its mind and we got unlucky in the randomness. Which one of these is the case and how do you decide? And that's a challenge. That's a challenge for pollsters. So one thing we could do, uh, and we'd, we'd like to have some sort of test to test this and decide this, and we'd like it to be independent of the actual numbers that we're choosing here. So we, we don't want one test uh, for 52, 35, and 13 and have a whole different statistical test if the last election had a different outcome. So here's where we come with what's called the Pearson's chi-square test. And let's think about that. Okay, so what, what happens there is, let's, uh, we're going to call these uh, values M in this column, and we're going to call the values in this column the, uh, X. This is the outcome, and this is the expected. So what happens in the, oh, I'll write it out here, the Pearson, um, P-A-R-S-O-N, chi-square test. So in this test, uh, what we do is we take the, the value that we uh, have measured, the random value that we've measured for the first class. So that's x, uh, x, I'm going to give it a subscript xi, and we're going to have i go from 1, 2, and 3. So xi minus mi. So this is the difference between the random outcome that you've measured and the expected outcome under the assumption of what we call the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is the distribution that you are testing. So we're going to test this distribution and we want to see does this distribution still hold. Okay, so we take our random outcome minus the expected uh, value for that and then this could be plus and minus and often what happens, uh, it's a good idea and often we square this and in, in sort of engineering terms this is the, uh, this is the power uh, of, the, uh, of that error. 
Uh, and so if we happen to do this and we take x, the difference, and we square it, and then we normalize that difference by the expected value, so uh, you'd for bigger values of the expected uh, um, uh, percentage or of the distribution, uh, for bigger values you would need bigger errors uh, for it to be meaningful uh, and to get the same number here. So if, if MI was big, then this difference would need to be big to get the same number as if MI was small. If MI was small, this difference would be small to get the same effect. So this is just a normalization of the square of the error. And then if we sum that up, over all of the different classes, so in this case i equals 1 uh, to 3, but uh, we'll call it k because we're giving it in the general sense here, and this is a number that you can calculate. Okay, so you've got the random outcomes, you've got the expected of the hypothesis you're testing, uh, the, dis the distribution that you're testing uh, of the random variable, uh, and then you put them into this and you calculate this number. And this is called a test statistic or a test variable. Now what Pearson uh, showed is for this test here is that this number here as n becomes large, so the number of uh, people that you're sampling, uh, as that becomes large, then this uh, number has a chi-square distribution with k minus 1 degrees of freedom. So that's a very important outcome. It, it tells you that for all different possible values, any different distribution that you want to test, uh, when you take the difference here for any distribution that you want to test, it always has a chi-square distribution if you calculate these numbers. So if you take your realization minus the expected. And so this is very powerful. It's a chi-squared and we can now see uh, whether our number that we would calculate for this, for example, for poll number two, uh, we can see what this number is. We can compare it to the chi and if it gives us a good degree of confidence, then we would say, yes, that hypothesis has held. If it gives us a low degree of confidence, we would say, ah, it's most likely uh, that, or we're willing to believe that the hypothesis is not true, and in this example, the people have changed their minds, and this distribution has changed. So let's, uh, let's think about that. So there's a graph for the chi-square distribution, uh, and for uh, when, when uh, k equals 3, so you've got the second um, uh, degree of freedom, the chi-square with two degrees of freedom, and that, uh, if we plot the um, cumulative, cumulative density function for that, uh, it looks like a function like this. That's how, uh, that's the shape of the function uh, when you've got two degrees of freedom. Okay, now, uh, it, in this testing, it's often done that you look at one minus this, and this value here uh, is obviously just one minus that, so it looks like this, and this function is often called the p-value. So this is called the p-value in this Pearson chi-square test. So you can, so let's see what we've done. So we've, we can calculate, here's our uh, formula. We take our realization that we've measured, the outcomes, we calculate this number uh, from our hypothesis and our outcome, and we get the value z. And value z is somewhere on this axis. So let's say it was this particular value here. Uh, then what this CDF says is that that fraction of random outcomes, uh, that fraction of random outcomes uh, is, or, or the, the outcomes that happen from that potential realization, this fraction of them would give you a smaller number than this one. So let's say this comes out to be uh, z bar, for example. That's, let's say it calculates to be z bar. Okay, now uh, let's, it's, this is probably where the p-value comes in. It's a little bit more intuitive. It's only one minus that, but let's think about what the p-value tells us. Okay, so the p-value, um, it's just one minus that. And what this tells us here is, this tells us when you put that value in that you've calculated and you read across from here, this number is the fraction of experiments that come from this null hypothesis and have a bigger test value. So this one's telling you about smaller values. That's the CDF, uh, always tells you about the smaller. Uh, and this is one minus it, so this is telling you about bigger. 
So for example, let's take this one here. This number here, see the 82 minus 13 in here, square that is gonna be a big number divided by 13. This is gonna give you a big number. So for pole number two, you get a big number for Z. So it's gonna be a long way to the right here. And what that's gonna tell us is this number here is going to be small. And what that's telling us is that there are a very few of the possible random realizations from this distribution, very few of them would give you a bigger value of Z. And that is telling you that this is not very likely to have been an outcome from this election distribution. And so you can then decide uh, a, whether or not uh, you're going to be confident to discard this null hypothesis. So for example, you might put a limit on there of, uh, of um, let's say for example, uh, 0 0.01. So you might say, if the Z turns out, if the Z comes to be a number where the P value is less than 0 0.01, which means less than 1% of the potential outcomes could have come with something more, then you might say, look, that's too small a number. Uh, we can't, uh, be confident that this distribution still holds. So it really is telling us that uh, from that poll, it's really telling us we need to change the distribution. We need to uh, uh, decide for ourselves and realize that this distribution has changed. Okay, so this is uh, what's happening here. Let's think of it as another way. Uh, what you've got is multiple dimensions. So here we've got six different parameters because we've got the expected values from our uh, our hypothesis uh, distribution. We've got our three values from our random realization. So we've got six different parameters. And this equation gives us a way to boil those down to a single parameter. Okay, and that single parameter tells us uh, if we because it's chi-squared, we know, therefore, because we know the graph for chi-squared, we know how many potential realizations could have given us that number or less. Oh, uh, yeah, that, sorry, that number or more, because it's that side of that Z. Okay, and if, you, if it's a very small fraction that would give you that number or more, then you can uh, discard it. And you can set that threshold yourself as to how confident you are uh, and or how much willingness you are to accept that you might have got the poll wrong or the other way, as we say, uh, believe that the poll was right and the hypothesis needs to change. Okay, and that as I get, again, just finally to say again, uh, this number here is, is, a, is a formula that holds for all the different potential distributions that you might be wanting to test. So it's not specific to the distribution that you're testing. You can test all the different distributions that you might want to test in this uh, model here. And of course, finally, just to say, of course, there is no black and white here. There's, it's not exactly the case that, that this changes or not. You'll never be able to know exactly whether this changes or not because you're only sampling a fraction of the total population. So you have to accept that you're never going to know exactly until you actually hold a full election in the future. Uh, and like I say, this holds for all sorts of different data models, not just elections uh, and, um, and people's voting. So hopefully this has given you more insights into how you test random data models, and in particular, the Pearson chi-square test. So if you found this useful, uh, give the video a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos, and check out the webpage in the link below where there's a full categorized link, uh, a list of videos on the channel.